I want to make this video because I think DeFi is still a little bit complicated and I want to explain the entire technological stack so it gives you a snapshot of what we're looking at at this thing that we're creating. What's blockchain, crypto, DeFi? So let's break them down into layers of cakes. You know, when you build cakes, it's not just one cake you put in your oven comes out and you're ready to eat. Cakes, you have different kind of layers that you build together and it forms this beautiful cake. So what we're trying to do with technology, with decentralized technologies, is to build a whole new infrastructure of cakes, of financial cakes, to coexist together with the traditional finance or the capital market that we have today, just by using new technology. So we can break them down into a few layers. We we'll start off at the bottom because that's the base layer and we have the hosting layer. The hosting layer is really simple. It's where you host all these different transactions that's happening. And that could be stuff like AWS, Amazon Web Service, or this new thing that they're building out. It's called the Internet Computer Protocol. Don't know much about that. Not financial advice. I'm just telling you that these are things that exist. So you have one that's centralized AWS, one that is looking to be the decentralized version called ICP, they just launched recently. So that's the hosting layer, right? You, have, you host all these different transactions that's going on. Then you have the second layer, the settlement layer. So the settlement layer is that, okay, you're hosting all these transactions, but so what? And the so what is really for you to account for all these transactions that's going on. Who's going to account for that? Who's settling that? It's where the settlement layer comes in. So the settlement layer, we have Bitcoin, we have Ethereum, we have Polkadot. You have a lot of stuff in this layer. I'm just giving you just three examples. And this is where all the transactions that's going on here, it needs to be accounted for, right? Think of it as a big accounting book. For everything that's going on in the Bitcoin network, it'll be settled here. Anything that's going on in the Ethereum network, it'll be settled here. Anything that's going on in the Polkadot network, it'll be settled here. So that's the settlement layer. Then we have scaling layer. You don't really need it, but it's just a way for you to create more transactions. And there are many different types of scaling layers. You have different kind of classifications for them. I'm just going to group them all together and call them the scaling layer. So you have stuff like Matic, you have stuff like Arcala, where they're built on top of this settlement layer, but they are much faster, they are cheaper, and allows you to transact a lot better. At the end of the day, all the settlement will go back to these bottom layers, but the scaling layer, it helps you to execute more things faster rate, cheaper. Then we come to this thing the application layer, the protocol layer. This layer is where you have your specific things being built. So for example, if you're looking at a chocolate cake, this protocol layer will be all the chocolate icing, everything relating to chocolate. If you're creating like a red velvet cake, then this will be your cream cheese frosting and all that kind of stuff. So the protocol layer is really something specific. For example, with Uni, that's for you to trade. It's basically the decentralized NASDAQ. Comp and Aave, these are basically your decentralized banks to be lending and borrowing. And then you have DAI, which is your decentralized USD. So these are very specific kind of applications. And these applications are not run by a centralized authority. They're protocols, they're machines to execute these applications. That's why it's a protocol layer. Or I call them the application layer. It's a lot easier to understand. So think of them as, you know, your Facebook app or your Instagram app on your phone. They just run one function to allow you to access to that network, to the Facebook network. Whatever that people are tweeting, you don't have them on your Facebook app. So they're all, you know, very specific application, but they run basically like a protocol. So it's called protocol application layer. And then the top layer is as this thing matures and this thing grows, you realize that they're not going to exist on its own, right? You have aggregation layer where they take in different kind of information everywhere. They aggregate things together. So think of it as, you know, I think there's this, there are apps where they're aggregating different information on different news sources. And I think Google News does that. They aggregate information from Bloomberg, from Fox News, from BuzzFeed, or whatever news sources that you read, aggregate them together on one app. So you have this new layer that's also growing. So what is DeFi that we're talking about? What is decentralized finance? Decentralized finance, as you see here, it really talks a little bit more about the application layer, the protocol layer, as well as the aggregation layer. And this is where you have a lot of decentralized finance applications going on. Yes, sure, these two are important. Oh, actually, all these bottom basic infrastructure, they're important. They're important in different kind of ways. They're more of the supporting infrastructure, very important. These are basically the roads. These are your supercars. And they form different kind of purposes. They behave differently. When we're talking about decentralized finance, usually people are referring more to these two layers, the aggregation layer and the protocol or application layer. Hope that makes sense and hope that helps to explain what decentralized finance is and how is it related to crypto.